Hey everyone, in this video we're going to go over a bunch of examples on how to remove objects or people from photos in Photoshop and just generally clean things up. This is pretty useful to know whether you're just interested for photography reasons or for video editing purposes as well, because it lets us do cool things like remove a couple books from a still and then track that frame back onto the footage to get rid of the books in our video too. So hopefully I've piqued your interest even if you're not a big Photoshop user and we can dive into some examples. I've actually touched on this subject a little bit already in my 3D card creation tutorial, where I broke a digital painting up into layers and then filled in the background that we cut out so that we could create this cool parallax effect. But since that wasn't the main point of the video, I kind of flew through that process. So now in this video, we'll get to go over it in more detail and cover a couple of examples so that you can see how I tackle a variety of shots that get a little bit more complicated as they go. Now let's finally start off with the most simple example, photo one. So here we are with example number one, and all we're gonna do to start off with is just remove some small objects like these two pine cones. So we're just gonna grab any kind of selection tool, I'll use the lasso tool, and we're gonna circle it, holding shift, circle the other one, and then go to edit, content aware fill, and more than likely you're going to have the auto setting set up as default. We're just gonna sample an area around the objects you selected, and here you'll see that the spots have been filled in, and it looks awesome already. So if you just hit okay, we can see that we have our pine cones gone, and on this new layer, it's the filled in area. Area. Now over here on the left, we also have this stick in front of the tree and we want to get rid of that too. And this time, just like the last, we'll go ahead and select the pole. We want to get as tight to the object as we can. And then if we want to play it a little bit safe with our selection, we can go ahead and go to select, modify and expand, which brings up this little dialogue and then just expand our selection by a few pixels. Now making sure we have our actual background layer selected, we're going to go back over to edit, content aware fill. And again, pretty much instantly here, we have a pretty good removal. I'm pretty happy with that, so I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now if we zoom in here, we can see that there's some sharp edges here and here that it didn't do a really great job of getting rid of. So to fix that, we can create a new layer and then go ahead and use the Spot Heal brush. This brush is pretty much if Content Aware Fill was its own brush. Making sure we have Sample All Layers turned on, we just have to paint over top of the areas we think look a little weird, and it's just going to do its thing. And now if I toggle on that spot heel brush layer on and off, you can see that we've done a good job of hiding those harsh edges. And zooming back out, you'd never know that those pine cones and that pole were there in the first place. So now that we're past that very basic example of just making a simple selection and then using content aware fill, what if for example in this photo we wanted to remove every single leaf from the ground? Well, we'd have to go in and select each one and then content aware fill them all individually. Well, there are two tricks I can show you to do this really fast. The first trick is to not use that photo because I don't have the patience for that. And the second trick is to use the paintbrush. I'll show you what I mean here. On a new layer, I will create a blue paintbrush and we're just gonna go in here and then paint over top of all of the leaves. And the reason this is gonna speed things up is because if we hold control or command while hovering over the icon for this layer, you'll see that our little cursor here gets a little selection box underneath it. So if we go ahead and click the icon, you'll see that all of our paintbrush marks have a selection around it now. So if we just hide that layer, we now have a selection on top of all of these leaves. So I'm going to deselect that, go back to painting, and show you what I mean. So I'm just going to paint over top of all of the leaves that I can see, pretty fast and loose. And this is a lot faster than doing it the other way with a selection. All right, so now that I've got the leaves that I want gone selected with paint here, holding control or command again, I'm going to click this icon to turn it into a selection, hide the paint, select our background, and then go to edit, content aware fill, and set it to auto. And here you can see that it's done a pretty good job of taking care of all of those leaves for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. So now if I just toggle this layer on and off, you can see that all of these leaves are gone pretty fast. So now that we're done with example one and two, let's move on to something a little bit more complicated. This is the example I used in the intro where I took this still from a video, removed these two books in Photoshop, and then tracked this area back onto the video in After Effects. Now we're not gonna go over the After Effects portion of that because that was just an example to show why video editors should care about using Photoshop as well, but we are gonna be going over how to remove these two books from this still. And this time it's not as simple as just using Content Aware Fill and calling it a day. As an example here, I'll show you I have these two books selected pretty well. Go to Edit, Content Aware Fill, and you can see here we're left with a pretty messy result. And even if I were to define my own area to sample from, if I just draw here, you can see it looks a bit better, but again, it's still not there at all because we have this bar that is completely destroyed and this shading is just all off. This little blue area could be fixed with a better selection, but that wouldn't solve the main issue. 
I will actually go ahead and click OK though, because we are going to be using Content Aware Fill as the first step in the full process of removing those books. Now you might be thinking that you can just grab this area right here and then just slide it over here scale it down and make it look okay. And here I've got it matched up as best as I can, but the perspective is still off if we look at the bar here and over here. And now you could hit control T and then holding control move these points around to try to move the perspective and get it just about right. But ultimately you're probably not gonna get there just eyeballing it. So what we'll be using as a solution is perspective clone stamping, which is its own process and it's not the same as just using the regular clone stamp where we can just hold alt, sample a point from here, and then paint it in over here. That's not gonna solve the problem for us because it's still the wrong perspective. So to get the perspective clone stamp going, first we're gonna hold control, shift, alt, and then press E, which is basically just gonna merge all of the visible layers below onto its own layer here. And next we're gonna go over to filter and vanishing point, which brings up this window right here. So what we're going to be using here is the create plane tool so that we can create a plane defining our table surface and using this plane we can then clone stamp in perspective from over here to where it needs to be over here. Now for this to look good we have to be very accurate with our plane making. So to get this right it's really helpful to use specific landmarks and stick to them. I'm going to use the intersection between this stripe and this stripe, so right here this perfect corner, and I'm going to end it over here at this perfect corner right there. Then again hitting this corner finally hitting this corner. Up here we can use this grid size slider to change our grid view here just to preview if we've got a good plane going. One thing we have to think about first though is the clone stamp tool can only perspective clone stamp inside of the box we've just made. And the areas we want to clone stamp are both outside of the box here and here. Well if we go ahead and use the edit plane tool we can grab this point in the middle and extend our plane outwards this way and out this way as well. And now the two areas we need to use are inside of our perspective plane. So now grabbing the stamp tool, making sure my hardness is at zero, I'm gonna hold alt and sample a point right here. And then I'm gonna move up here and try to match it up as best as I can. And then just paint across in one line like this. And as you can see, this is a lot better than we could do by hand in terms of matching the perspective that this beam should be. Now there's still a lot of work we have to do to blend it in more, but I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And you can see here, we have a really good base to start our reconstruction from now. One of the first differences you'll notice from the actual image to our reconstruction is how dark this middle line is right here. If we look in the original, it's actually really faint. So we're gonna try to match that in our edited version. So creating a new layer over top, I'm gonna use the spot heel brush and we're gonna paint this line out right here. Now in content aware fill mode, right here it's not going to do the best job filling that in for us but if we switch over to proximity match we're going to get a better look and the spots that don't work we're just going to go over them again like this and is looking decent now the reason we covered it up is because now we can just go over here and set this layer to 50 percent opacity and instantly we've got a lighter line that matches our source a little bit better now again holding Control shift alt and e i'm going to merge everything onto its own layer and hide the layers below it so that we can go over here and create a mask and with our brush set to black with a hardness of zero and a flow of say 20 we can go ahead and fade these edges out so that they blend in a little bit more you can see if I toggle this on and off, the harsh edges are gone. Now the next step for us is going to be another round of content of our filling to get this patch right here looking a little bit more reasonable. So I'm going to start off by making a little bit better of a selection, going over to edit, content of our fill again. And now with this content of our fill, we've done a lot better of a job covering all that up. Now if we hit OK and pull it back, this table looks a lot better. And for the most part, it's done. We can just see there's a few spots here that are a bit repetitive, so we can just grab the spot healing brush and swipe those a little bit. And if we zoom out again, it's looking great. If I just go ahead and group everything, you can see the before and after, and that's pretty much how I would tackle example number three. And finally, here is example number four. Say for example, we wanted to use this lighthouse as a set extension in a video, which pretty much just involves cutting the lighthouse out of this photo, tracking your footage, and then placing the lighthouse in the background of your footage to make it look like there was a lighthouse there. Now we could go ahead and extract the lighthouse as is, but the problem is we've got these people in this railing here, meaning we could only use the lighthouse from about here up. So for this example, we'll be removing these people and this railing and then are having to reconstruct everything that they're blocking, like this side of the window over here and this section of the wall right here that the people are covering. To start off like usual, we're going to be content aware filling just to get our base. So we're going to go ahead and make a loose selection over these people and the railing. So once we've got our rough selection of everything we want removed, we're going to go ahead again and go to edit content aware fill. And here, like always, we're pretty close already with just our content aware fill. So we're gonna go ahead and click OK, Control D to deselect, and zooming in a little bit so we can see everything better. The first thing I'm gonna wanna tackle is to fix the edges by filling this area here and here with sky so that we have a clean outline of our lighthouse visible. Then we'll probably be using the clone stamp tool to fix this area right here, 
After that, we'll tackle reconstructing this edge of the window. And finally, we'll go ahead and clean up this area right here because it's looking a little mushy. So starting with the clone stamp tool, I'm just gonna zoom in here on a new layer and make sure that all layers are selected to sample from right here. Holding Alt, I'm gonna select over here to get a sample of the sky. And then I'm just gonna paint straight down and give myself some buffer room. And I'm gonna do the same for over here. I'm gonna sample a bit of the sky using Alt and paint in here, and then just give myself some buffer room. Great, so now we got the edges taken care of, let's fix up this door right here using the same technique. On a new layer again, just to keep everything separated, I'm gonna sample down here and use that to paint in this area. Sample this door below here to paint in right here. Sample the wall right here, paint upwards, and then just fill in the rest by sampling more black. Then we can just fix this patch up really easily by sampling from directly above it. And now we've got that area taken care of. While we were zoomed in, I noticed that this area is also a little messed up. So on a new layer, I'm gonna go ahead and use the spot heal brush and see if we can just select the whole thing and get it sorted for us. And it looks like it is sorted for us. So now it's time to sort out this window. On a new layer again, we're gonna grab the clone stamp tool and we're just gonna be clone stamping for the most part our way through this reconstruction. Since we have a good sample of the bottom of the window here, we could just sample this point, line it up as best we can and then paint it over to the right. That looks like we've got enough of that covered. And now we'll just continue this strip down. So we'll just sample a point up here, line it up again like before, and then paint downwards. Now at this intersection, we're gonna start clone stamping over ourselves. So making the brush smaller, zooming in a little bit more, we could just get a little bit more detailed about it and it should work out pretty well, especially when we're zoomed out all the way. Now the same thing we did for these two, we're gonna be doing for this section of the wall right here. I'm gonna create a new layer again. I'm gonna move it underneath this layer and then using a bigger clone stamp brush, I'm just gonna grab some of the rock up here and start painting down with it. Now the last of it that doesn't look quite right to me is this area right here, which should be simple enough to fix, but also this area is looking a little bit mushy and weird. So to sort that out, we'll use a different tool that I haven't shown you before, and that's underneath the spot heel brush, there is the patch tool. So on a new layer, I'm gonna hit sample all layers, and we're gonna use the patch tool to fill in this patch. We're just going to select this area, grab this patch, drag it straight up pretty much, and then just release it over here. And now we've pretty much just patched out that gross section with a lot better, less mushy wall. And that's pretty much it for the lighthouse. If I toggle it on and off, you can see we've removed those people and the railing, and we've kind of just filled in the missing data here. And it's perfect for if we wanted to cut this out and place it in a video as a digital set extension, or if we just wanted to get all of these people out of our photo, we could just go ahead and remove these people like we have been by using the content aware fill first, and then touching things up with either the spot heel brush, patch tool, or the clone stamp tool. And for situations where you need to work in perspective to make it look right, you can always hit up the perspective clone stamp tool. So a few days ago on Twitter, I asked no arms or no legs and a grand total of three people voted for no arms. So let's go ahead and take the arms off of everyone standing here in the photo. All right, time to channel my inner Bob Ross with the clone stamp tool and just start <laughs> cutting away. <laughs> All right, this guy's been de-armed. <laughs> now it's your friend's turn. This is uh, actually a lot easier than you'd think because you know, it's so far away that a lot of the details you're not noticing. It also helps that the sky is also like all generally one color. For the most part, I could just sample from anywhere and paint here and it'll like look fine. If the, if the sky had clouds, then that'd be a little bit tougher, but you know, still the same principle. All right, victim number two has been dealt with. We went from spending time removing the railing to carefully painting the railing back into existence. So full circle. Okay, so this is the most challenging part that's come up so far and it's not even that challenging. All right, so here we have this weird transition between the railing on this side and this side. It's pretty hard line. Even if I take off the clone stamp, it is just this weird hard transition here. So to blend that in a little bit more, I'm just gonna take the flow down to something really low and then grab a sample from this side, paint on top, grab a sample from this side, paint on top. And we're just gonna keep doing that back and forth and sort of slowly blend one into the other. And from back here, it looks pretty consistent with the rest of the railing in terms of blending. And here we are, the last guy who's about to lose his arms. It's been a wonderful ride, and I'd like to thank each and every one of you who voted for this, all three of you. I don't know your names, but I do know your hearts because they all scream in unison for lack of arms. And there we go. If you want a chance to influence something dumb in the next tutorial, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links for both are in the description. Now let me take a sec to thank this video's sponsor, Skillshare. 
If you weren't aware, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creators. They've got tons of topics you can explore, but the ones I was personally drawn to were film and video, productivity, and creative writing. A class that I watched recently that I think you might enjoy is Nathaniel Drew's course called Creativity Unleashed, Discover, Hone, and Share Your Voice Online. He's also got a great YouTube channel, by the way. In the course, he goes over some great ways to find inspiration, get yourself in a more creative state, and stay consistent with whatever it is you're making. If any of that sounds good to you, then give his course and Skillshare a go. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, so you don't have to worry about ads, and they're constantly launching new premium classes for members so you can stay focused and follow where your creativity takes you. If you're interested in joining, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare, so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thanks, Skillshare.